talking to Rylan Barnes um, about the work. He, he picks rocks, I guess, sometimes. Or he used to pick rocks. I mean, what is, what is his, uh, what's his story from your perspective? Just He said he felt he was maybe fourth on the depth chart coming in. Because of injuries, he's come on and done what he did. Yeah, you know, I, I, I would hope it epitomizes a little bit of what our program's been about, you know, over the nine years we've been here. You know, I, I feel like um, the thing that we have talked about a lot in our football program is you are going to get your opportunity. You're going to get your moment. That's usually what college football is about. The, the reality becomes, do you take advantage of your moment? And sometimes, you know, sometimes you may only get one. And, man, do you take your shot? And some people are, you know, fortunate to get a multitude of different moments. But, you know, I think that what's been really fun about Ryland, I think kind of like Kyle Kemp maybe in 17, you man, you get this opportunity, you get this shot, and then you just maximize it. And, um, you know, I think there's so many of the young men that we've coached here over their nine-year career that have gotten – their moment or an opportunity, and whether it's a special teams, and then it's like, man, Jake Hummel and how his trajectory grew here in our football program. I think Gary Vaughn, so similar, you know, got that opportunity. You look back at Bo's freshman year, and man, how Bo came onto the scene. So I, I just think we've been really fortunate to have great young men that have great character, <clears throat> you know, picking up rocks. I, I would say he's like been the rock a little bit over the last, you know, I think we were uneasy for a while. And, and when he stepped in and kind of became the rock, I mean, the way he's played has been not just like he's playing, he's playing really, really good football for us. And uh, he's strong, he's physical, um, you know, he's powerful at the point of attack. He's a really good dropper in terms of, you know, playing pass coverage. So um, I, I feel like he's a guy that's just really continuing to get better. But, um, you know, like I said, when, when our story is over someday here, I hope this is a story that resonates with, man, what was this era about of reaching your full potential, about becoming the best version of yourself. And I feel like Ryland's a guy that's certainly living that moment right now. After the UCF game, you had said Rocco made plays similar to a certain someone here, obviously, in reference to Brock Purdy. Yeah. Was that a comparison that you identified on the recruiting trail, or did that start to develop when he was in the program? Yeah, I, I, I just think, I, I, number one, I would say the quarterback position is so hard to play, you know, and I, I don't care what level it is. But I think as you grow into, you know, power four football where people are writing about it and, you know, everybody has a comment about the sport to professionally, that position is so much more mental than it is even physical. And I think one of the things that you did identify early with Rocco is who he was as a human being, as a young man. Um, and I, I think if you said what were, you know, Brock's great traits, I, I think remember talking about this a lot with Brock is um, Brock was never trying to be anybody else. He, he didn't come in here and try to be like, um, you know, his hero is Dan Marino. It wasn't like, oh, I want to be like Dan Marino. Like, he was always just trying to be the best version of Brock that he could be. And I think the thing that, that's been really fun about Rocco is really he's been that same guy every day that he's been in our football program. He's never come in and said, man, I want to be like Brock Purdy or I want to be like, um, you know, player X, Y, or Z, or, man, I want to be like my dad. I, I just want to be the best I possibly can be. And I think when you do that and you have that kind of character and humility, what happens is people are drawn to you. And I, I think that's the one thing that certainly Brock had the unique ability to do and certainly what Rocco is doing right now. When Rocco finds himself off kilter for a quarter or a half but is able to come back and find a way to win, how much confidence can that provide for the offense? Yeah, I think it's huge. You know, I mean, I honestly, you're, you've gotten two years of it, right? I mean, you, you saw last year at Ohio, I think his coming out party was, you know, he's puking his guts out at halftime and can't even go in and get correction and can hardly walk to the field in the third quarter and literally plays so well that he gives us a chance on a day we didn't play great football to win the football game. To, man, you've seen him in his moments. And I think a lot we talk here, you know, and, and you know, really tried to research this is like, man, life and sport is like the law of progression. You know, it never goes perfectly up. You're going to have blips along the way. The great ones, the great people, the great teams, the great players, their blip is a small blip and bam, they've got this unique ability to get themselves back on the trajectory of great. And, you know, I think that's one of the things that's been fun to watch about Rocco is knowing who he is as a human, knowing what he stands for. Man, a mistake doesn't knock him off kilter. It may be a blip in the moment, but he's got this unique ability to get himself back on track. And it's a tribute to who he is, his family, what he, how he's grown up. Um, you know, obviously we didn't do that. He's done that. And it's been really fun to watch. 
you just talked a lot about your individual players over the years getting their moment, getting their opportunity. How true is that for your football program right now at 7-0, and heading into the month you always highlight as the pivotal one? Yeah, you know, I, I think that's you want to be, you know, whether you're – Five and two, four and three, seven and zero. Oh, like it kind of goes out the window because the reality is, it's you're defined by how you play in November, and you know you want to be in a position here to be in the mix and be where you want to be. And I think the fun thing for us is, you know, if you look at our nine years now, you know, seven of them we've been here, we've been right in this moment, right in this wheelhouse, and. Um, the reality of it is, you know, the, the years where you felt like, man, you reached your full potential, you were actually able to be your best in the month of November and you were able to, you know, truly separate yourself as, as a great football team. And I think that's the great challenge for this team. You know, I, I think, again, one of the nice things is we've got enough guys that have been through some of those good times and bad times that, you know, we've got scars and wisdom of what's allowed us to play good in November at times and what's maybe not allowed us to play how we need to and, you know, how how do we collectively take a step back last week, reflect on that, make sure, you know, we're aligned correctly? And then how do we do a great job of like setting ourselves for, you know, what is a critical time and any football team's journey is who are you when you finish this thing in November and what do you become? And I think those things are exciting for us, but what a great challenge. What's been the, I guess, that you can take forward this year, the years that you didn't meet that potential or you didn't? What's I guess more important for how you approach this year. Yeah, I, I, I still think a lot of it, it goes back to, and, and believe me, I would put myself in this category, is leadership, you know, and I know I, I think I, I've said this, you know, the, the great John Maxwell quote of like, everything does rise and fall with leadership, right? I, I think that's, that is so critical. And I think when our leadership has been right, we have risen to become our best and that doesn't mean we're perfect but man we've, we've man, you, you've become your best and maybe when our leadership wasn't where it needed to be and and again you, you it has to start with me and globally you know our coaches and our senior leaders um you know when we've been our best i feel like we've been able to achieve and when we maybe haven't been our best you know maybe we didn't get to what we had the ability to become Entering the season, you guys ranked top five, I think, in the country in returning production. There's other teams that were in that that haven't had the success you guys have had. I'm not asking you to comment on those teams, of course, but yeah. what's been the biggest key for you guys turning a large number of players coming back into a 7-0 and record when you went 7-5 and a season ago? Yeah, I, I would just say I hope the word humility would come into play is, you know, I think any time you get experience, um, sometimes – ego can set in and say well experience is all I need or you have enough humility to look at the experience that you just gained and say what did I do well and what did I not do well and how do I make sure that we whatever we didn't do well how do we fill in those gaps and I think that was really our mantra coming back in January of uh, a year ago is listen a lot of guys got opportunities to play a lot of you guys were young and whether you should have played or shouldn't have played or were ready to play or not you had to play and you garnered this great experience but now let's 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 man let's have enough humility to say what did you do well with that experience and what did you not and it's no different than us coaches man what did we do well with the players that came back and played um, what did we not do well how do we make sure we fill in those gaps and I think even just as as I've watched this team this fall I think one of the things I'm proud of our coaching staff so far is we've had enough humility to look at that even from each game we played you know as is being able to to self-assess and if you don't then I don't know how you grow and I think that's been the biggest thing for us and so I think the humility and the curiosity to grow I think those two things have really helped this group. You obviously mentioned humility there a ton. And the way the sport has changed, obviously so many players can go chase their own opportunities right. financially. But I imagine that you had players pass on greater financial opportunities mm -hmm. to come back and stay here and be successful here. What does that say about those guys coming back and being able to have the success that they have had um, while taking their own personal sacrifice? Well, I, I do think our sport is still about team. And, and we live in a world that's not about team anymore, which is really unfortunate. And a society, and certainly collegiate athletics, that used to be about team. And I do still think that the people that can still cultivate team, it's not about you, it's about us and we, um, then I think great things can really still happen. And um, our sport demands it, this sport, different than any other sport. It's, it's in, not belittling to any other sport. This is still the greatest team sport in the history of sport. 
Um, because, man, you got 11 people on offense, you got 11 people on defense, you got 11 people on special team. Man, you have to play great team to be able to win games. Um, it's not just talent. And so I think what it emphasizes here is that team still has mattered, and we haven't lost our way in that. Um, I still think young people want to be a part of something bigger than themselves. Um, and, you know, parents want young people to be a part of that, you know, and I think we've been able to at least forge that together here, not to say we've been perfect or we're miraculous in any way, shape or form, because there's great people doing that across college football and college athletics. But I do think that that emphasis on team is what it's what we've always sold here. We haven't wavered from that. Um, yeah, I think you guys know me enough that like, man, it's not like we're out there able to sell much more than that, to be quite honest with you. And, um, and then the hope that, man, we can develop you to be your best if you come be a part of our team. And those two things really matter and have mattered here for us. So we're really grateful that the young men that have chose to stay here, and I think you guys know that story enough too. There's a multitude of guys that had the opportunity to certainly financially enhance themselves, but man, maybe the lessons learned will really set themselves up for the rest of their lives to be the best humans that they possibly can be. So we're grateful and we don't take, you know, their loyalty to us for granted, for sure. Matt, uh, Baron Morton is considered questionable for this game. How does that change your preparation or does it? Yeah, I don't know. You know, I, I think one of the things I've been so impressed with Texas Tech over the years and, and um, you know, honestly, since coach has been there, just their ability, they've gone through some quarterbacks, you know, I mean, if you look at, at, you know, 22 and 23, you know, they've had injuries and have had to persevere through it. And they have, um, you know, even on Saturday, I mean, you know, I, I've just been so impressed with the young man that's been their quarterback and man, he goes out and at halftime, the first drive, I think nine for nine, right down the field for a touchdown, this young freshman comes in. And I think it just says how, how well dedicated they are to teaching their system you know they have a unique system and what they do offensively I think they've done a great job recruiting there and I think they've got great confidence no matter who has ever played a quarterback that man they can go in and run their system and, and be flawless at it so um, you know I, I give coach a lot of credit honestly they, they do a really great job on offense and you know they they make you they challenge you in a multitude of different ways but no matter who's been the quarterback over the years boy they have been able to be flawlessly execute what they ask those guys to do Obviously now, second bye week, most, probably the most crucial point of the season before the month of November, like you talked about, but for, especially for a group like the offensive line. What are you kind of seeing from, them from the first seven games and how they've prepared for this final stretch of the season? Well, I, I would just say that group has grown each week and, and I, I think has um, been challenged, you know, at times. I mean, man, we've had a lot of injuries on that group from the beginning of the season to the midpoint of the season. And I think guys have stepped in there and been, answer, been able to answer, you know, their opportunity to get in the game for the best interest of the team and play good football. And I think one nice thing about a bye week is, you know, one area that you can really reset yourself is fundamentally. And there's no greater position that has fundamental excellence than what you ask an offensive line to be able to do. So I think for us to have the ability to kind of reset ourselves fundamentally mentally and some of the things we need to do to be our best and um, you know just man you talk about your your punch your first two steps your footwork you know the ability to communicate within the game I think all those things were really beneficial for that group and 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 again hopefully give us a great opportunity to continue to grow forward because I know I think we said this at the beginning of the year you know that group's growth will be a huge huge piece of how this football team plays especially in championship moments and it'll be big for us the the bye week health wise it came at a pretty good time. Can you give us an update on uh, some of the, those guys like Bramer, especially, and then some of those that are out for longer periods of time, too, like Will McLaughlin. How's that going with him and some yeah. other guys? Yeah, I, I think obviously, you know, a week off was, was such a pivotal time for our football team. And, um, you know, I, I think when you look at us, we'll, we'll probably be as close to you know, as strong as we've been since, you know, probably the starting the Arkansas State game, which is huge, you know, to be able to at least get to that point, I thought was really big for our team. You know, Ben's situation probably was the biggest win of Saturday night that we had. Um, it didn't look great on Saturday, but, you know, as we were able to get x-rays and MRIs and all those kind of good things, man, we're going to get Ben back. And I think even to the point where potentially this week, um, you know, we'll see if that's the case. You know, was out of practice today, was able to do some things, which I thought was really beneficial. Um, but I think, you know, you know, whether if it's not this week, I think it'll be week to week from there. But um, I, I'm really excited about where he's at. And obviously, he's such a critical piece to our football team. 
um, you know, you talk about some of those guys that are, you know, Bake, I think, is, is trending in a really positive way. You know, I think there's hope that maybe, you know, as we get to December, um, there's potential that, that a guy like Caleb can get himself back on the football field. I think Carson Willich is in the same boat. Um, you know, I think more probably in a December timeline, you know, January timeline. And then uh, I think the guy probably of that group that's closest to maybe returning is Will McLaughlin, you know, and I think Will is um, a guy that, you know, hopefully sometime in this block here that we get a chance to get Will back on the football field. And I think it'd be huge for Will and obviously be huge, huge lift for our football team as well. Whether it's Rocco or a new recruit, what do you personally look for in a quarterback? What does it take to play quarterback here at Iowa State? Yeah, you know, I, I think sometimes everybody's asked me that question. And I, when I talk about, you know, the position, I, I think the first thing is you have to define our program. You have to define the character of what this program has stood for. And to me, those value systems, you know, people have heard me talk recruiting in here. It's character. Got to love football. And obviously, you got to understand the value of an education, and you got to be able to lead in all three of those areas. And um, you know, when you're the quarterback, you have to live it. You have to embody it every every aspect of it, because that's what I believe in. You have to come here, and we have to find a young man that believes in those same value systems. If not, I think it's really hard for the head coach and the quarterback to be aligned on the same page. And I feel like in a program like this, I've always talked about alignment here. When we've been aligned you know, from administration to f football program to, to players in the program, when there's been great alignment, man, we've been really special. And, you know, I, I think part of that is the quarterback aligns a lot with the players. It just does. He catches the ball. He's got the ball in his hands. He's got to make great decisions. So I, I would say from a personal standpoint, that's first. And then I would say the second piece of it is, you know, I still think when you look for talent, you're looking for guys that can get the job done, you know. And I, I love, I still think leadership is critical. I, I think, you know, number one, will would I follow this player? Would I want to be around this player in the locker room? Number two, um, you know, obviously, can you can he use his feet? I think today in football, you got to have some mobility to be able to extend plays and um, you know give yourself a chance to be successful. And then, are you an accurate passer? I think those things are are still really critical critical football tangible pieces of the recruiting process. But I, I think those two things are, are critical. <coughs> Excuse me, Matt. <coughs> Excuse me. We talked about competitive in endurance mm -hmm. quite a bit in this program and elsewhere, I suppose, but. How does that tie into the humility piece you talked about to be maybe at a level it's never been at because with that experience, you can maybe add to that yeah. factor? Well, I, I think the reality of college football today, and I was just had a great conversation about this, you know, I think if you think about what's going on in our kids' lives right now, it, like take the football piece out. You've got transfer portal coming, right? Like every college football program in America, that's going to explode in a month. So how much of the locker room's thinking about that, which you can say what you want. Every locker room's got guys thinking about that. Two, right, you've got, man, the season's long, January to wherever we are right now, no, almost November. That's long. And so mentally it's exhausting. And then, you know, and then number three, you know, you got on the other end, you got good players that are like, man, should I stay or should I go? Should I go to the NFL? Should I, man, I got my own goals and aspirations. And so I think the reality of like, man, that, that endurance to, man, stay the course. It, all this is easy to, to sit up here and talk about it, but if you really look, and then you look at what you guys are writing on social media, what everybody's writing about these guys on social media, man, I have a good game, I have a bad game. What happens? Like, can you really stay the course? Like, not many can and I mean, how many kids actually could? I mean, could we have done that at 18 to 22? Probably been really tough, right? So I think what we're asking these kids is, is, is really hard and it's really challenging. I think it's why you got to break it down. And, and we talk a lot, man, what are our kids thinking? You know, like, first of all, where are they at? Like, if we're just going to sit here and ram it down their throat on football, boy, you're missing the boat because these kids got real lives. And, man, our coaches got real lives, too. They got a lot of stuff going on. So I think the reality of, like, having enough humility to, to first and foremost know that, man, there's a lot going on. You know, there's a lot 
challenging these young people right now and challenging our coaches and everybody else. And I think having the ability to kind of take a step back and have a, a sense of, man, let's treat the person first before we attack the team and before we attack, hey, this week's game. If we don't think about it in those steps, then I think we misstep. And believe me, as the leader, I've misstep plenty of times um, because you're so excited about, man, the, the result. But the reality of it is if, if those other things aren't aligned, you got no shot. And, you know, we're fortunate. We've got great leadership in terms of our coaches that believe in these young people as young men. Um, we've got great senior leaders that understand these are great young men and they have to be, man, they have to have, we can't leave anybody behind because if you would have left Ryland behind, we would be, we'd be in a tough spot, right? And so, um, but that's all, that's, that's foreign. That's anti like what we're supposed to do in our world right now. You know, like we're supposed to worry about the result and we're supposed to worry about all these other things. But to me, that's why I've always felt like it's bigger than just winning and losing. It's how you do it and what's your process. And man, can we master ourselves along the way? And um, we try to work really hard at that. And not, we're still not perfect, never will be, but you're trying to chase it to be your best. So I think it's a great point, though. Coach, Iowa State's never been 8-0. and You're one win away from getting there. This is dating back to the 1890s. I know they only played two games that year in 1892. But what would it mean to you, uh, just from a historical standpoint, to reach that mark that has never been done here? Yeah, I, I don't know if it would mean much. I, I think, again, to me, my biggest chase is how we finish the season. You know, what kind of team do we become through the month of November? And again, we, we've done a lot of first here that, that haven't been done, and that's all awesome. But the reality of it is you're defined by how you finish and what you, what you do to finish this thing out. And obviously winning in, is something you want to do, and, and that will be a huge piece of our success or not. But I think, again, I, I go back to more of like how we do it and the type of team we are on Saturday and how we play the game. I know I said last week, man, whether we won or lost the football game last week in Central Florida, I was really proud of how our kids battled and played. And, and you know, we could have played better at times to make sure that it wasn't as close of a game as it, as it became. But the reality of it is that's the journey we're on. And so those are all great things along the way, and you appreciate those at some point. But the reality of it is, man, we got a, we got a big month in November. We got big games coming. Um, our, our kids have done a great job of putting ourselves in a great position to play important games in November. And, and we're going to have to demand to get ourselves better. And I think that's a, that's a great challenge in front of this team right now. That's it, Coach. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you.